Right, in today's video, we're going to talk about uh, kind of visualizing RF standing waves that can occur on a transmission line when it's not properly terminated in the line's characteristic impedance. We've dealt with terminations and things in the past with a couple of videos, uh, and I'll link some of those below. We also did a video on um, a directional coupler, uh, such as this one here, that can be used to measure the uh, both forward and reflected waves on a transmission line and uh, to show that uh, when the line is properly terminated there's no reflected power and when it's it's improperly terminated you get some energy flowing back the same way and in our discussions we've talked about uh, the fact that when you've got these forward w waves and the reflected waves coming back that they'll add up um, both constructively and destructively in the line creating what's called a standing wave. So in this video again we just want to try and take a look and see how they're formed and what they look like. Now the Wikipedia page on standing wave ratio uh, has got a couple of pretty good graphics here that uh, show how a standing wave is formed from an incident wave and a reflected wave and also shows what that standing wave looks like for different amounts of reflection. So I'd encourage you to follow this link, it'll be in the show notes below as well, uh, to augment uh, what we're going to show here on the bench today. I'm generating a pair of signals out of my function generator back here to kind of simulate what's going on on the transmission line. So let's picture that this wave that's showing going here from left to right is the incident wave coming from some RF source down the transmission line to a load connected at this end. And if the load is a perfect match to the transmission line impedance, there'll be no reflected wave. Now, of course, if the load is either an open or a short, the reflected wave will be equal in magnitude to the incident wave, which we can simulate by adding the second channel here. So I've got the uh, incident wave coming in this direction, getting reflected back, and that's the blue waveform going back the other way. So this is kind of simulating in ultra slow motion here what's going on with waves with a, uh, a, a either an open or a short uh, missed termination at the end of the line. So you can almost imagine that uh, the, what we see on the screen is kind of a picture of what's going on over a section of the transmission line. Okay. Uh, so if the transmission line was perfectly terminated we'd have no reflected signal and we'd have a situation that looks like this. The signal at any place across this line, if we measured its amplitude or its power, would simply be the sum of those two signals. So we could turn on a math channel that adds those together, and we could see the math channel, which is red, just overlays right on top of channel 1. And if we wanted to measure the magnitude of that, you know, if we did that with uh, an RS, RMS power meter or a uh, RF detector probe, we'd simply measure uh, you know, a constant amplitude. And we can see that you know, just by simply doing a little bit of persistence on the screen, and let's set that to infinite persistence, so we can see we've got a, a constant envelope of, uh, of that signal. So, you know, pretty easy to understand. So let's take a look at what happens when we misterminate the line. I'll turn the persistence back off, and let me turn the math off here for a second. And let's put on a, a perfect reflection, meaning either an open or a short, so that the signal is reflected at full amplitude. So now I've got these two signals coming back, and you can kind of almost see that they, they add up right on top of each other. That's going to create a peak, and then when they're exactly 180 degrees out of phase, that's going to create a minimum. If we turn that math trace back on, we can actually see that happening. So we can actually see now that the sum of that incident wave and the reflected wave are resulting in a waveform that's essentially standing still. Now what are we going to measure if we tried to measure power you know, at that, you know, on the line here? Well, again, it helps to uh, put the persistence on here. So let's make an infinite persistence. And we can actually see that the uh, sum of those things creates this beat pattern, actually, you know, that has got nulls, or what we call nodes, at uh, every half wavelength. And then we've got peaks or anti-nodes at the other half wavelengths. So the amount of power that we'd measure, if we measured power at different points on the line, would be different depending on where we measured it because of that standing wave. Now it might be a little bit harder to visualize is what happens if the reflected waveform is not at the same magnitude as the incident waveform. So I'll simulate that by turning the amplitude down on my reflected waveform. Let me get down to about half. 
of what the incident waveform is. And what happens when we sum these together? If we turn that math trace on, we can see we still get a sine wave, but it's kind of bouncing and moving a little bit, uh, and, and so it's kind of hard to see what would happen with the standing wave. But again, if we turn uh, infinite persistence on, it becomes kind of easier to see. So we see we still get nodes, if you will, every half wavelength and peaks every half wavelength. Um, and essentially it's, uh, you know, we go from that kind of half wave rectified thing to something that's a little bit softer, but we still have a standing wave. In fact, you know, the voltage standing wave ratio that you, you hear about is really a measure of the forward waveform amplitude and the reflected waveform amplitude. What we're seeing here is essentially the sum of those two things and how you actually wind up getting a standing wave out of that. So in order to visualize the standing wave on an actual transmission line, I'm using this uh, kind of open line here, a strip line. It's about four inches long, um, so we can actually measure the voltage at different points on that line. Now in order to see a standing wave, we've got to consider the wavelength of the RF signal that I've got coming from the RF source here. Um, in a strip line like this, uh, the speed of propagation is about 6 inches or a little over 15 centimeters per nanosecond. So we have to consider the period of our RF signal and in to ensure that we at least get uh, a half or you know, more than one period or so contained within that strip line. So I'm, I'm using actually a 2.5 gigahertz, uh, actually a 2.4 gigahertz RF signal coming from over here. And on this transmission line would give me a wave overall wavelength of about 2.5 inches, which is, you know, about, uh, you know, that big or so on this tra transmission line here. So we should be able to see, you know, a couple of nodes and anti-nodes in the standing wave. But to take a look at the, the RF voltage that we have on the line, what I'm going to use is this uh, little RF detector probe. Uh, I did a video on this as well, just a couple of uh, germanium diodes and a couple of capacitors to uh, detect the RF power. So we'll be able to probe at different spots along the line and actually visualize that standing wave. Now we'll start off by putting a, a 50 ohm termination on the end of the line and uh, let's probe uh, the voltage on the line. I've got the scope going at a very slow sweep speed so we can actually see the trend as we take a look at this. So if I put the probe on here, you can kind of see you know, the RF amplitude here, it's about one division. I'm not going to care about the actual voltage here, but just about one division or so on the screen. And if I walk my way down to different spots on the line, I can kind of see that it's about the same voltage no matter where I measure it. In fact, if I very carefully slide this down the line, if I can get both contacts on there and slide it down the line, all right, you can see there's a little bit of variation here. There's a little bit of a standing wave, and that's because this termination is probably not perfect at 2.5 gigahertz. Me probing it introduces a discontinuity, which is going to add some reflections, and this line is probably not perfectly 50 ohms. So I think it's certainly acceptable that you're going to see a little bit of a standing wave. Okay, not a tremendous amount, but a little bit as we slide this down the line, and we can actually see that as we trace it out. Of course, things would get a whole lot more dramatic if we remove the termination here and leave it as an open circuit. We're going to get kind of that perfect termination or perfect reflection off of that open circuit, and we should see a pretty strong uh, standing wave here. So if I stick the probe onto the line at this end here, uh, see at that point I see very little RF energy. If I slide down the line here, we see the RF power coming up. So right about here on the line, we're sitting you know, pretty close to you know, a max power, a whole lot higher than I saw before. Let's slide down the line a little bit further. We can see the voltage coming down. Right about here, it reaches a minimum. There's one of our nodes. If we go another half a wavelength further, further down the line, my RF power comes back up again. Okay, So you can actually see that standing wave. In fact, if I try to move this linearly at a constant speed, we should be able to trace out that standing wave pattern. Let's see if I can do that. I'm going to try this one more time to see if I can get a nice clean picture of that standing wave pattern. All right, here we go. I 
There we go. That was a pretty clean picture. I scooted along pretty at a constant speed here. And I can actually see that standing wave pattern that looks just like the envelope of what we saw on the Wikipedia page as well as uh, in the RF measurements that we did earlier on the scope. Right, I hope you enjoyed this uh, short little video on visualizing RF standing waves on misterminated transmission lines, what they actually look like and how the RF power measured at different points in the line, or I should say the RF voltage at different points on the line, will vary depending on where you are in the line with respect to the wavelength of the signal that's coming in and what the termination is doing. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Comments are always welcome. Give me a nice big thumbs up if you liked the video and uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll see you next time. Thank you.